My first coral snake bite was 37 years ago. One fang in the thumb where the snake overbit the vial that we were trying to collect the venom. I had always heard that coral snake bites were relatively painless. And as it turned out, that was a very, a very painful bite. Uh, I experienced immediate burning pain uh, as you would from uh, a pygmy rattlesnake or a viper. Uh, I did not have any swelling or edema with that bite. And at that time, there was not antivenom. So I used coral snake antivenom from Bhutan Tan in South America, uh, 20 cc's, and came through that bite okay. See, the problem with coral snake bites are that they can be painless uh, or they can be painful. And if they're painless and you're a child and you go in and tell your parents, I think I got bit by a snake I picked up, and the parents watch and they see uh, no symptoms that are visually uh, apparent, they might think everything's fine. And there was a case where uh, one, one young child got bitten, similar circumstances, 18 hours later. He was in a hospital, put on a respiratory, died. What you need to look for with a coral snake bite with your children or yourself to see if you're having neurological involvement is ptosis, droopiness of the eyelid, uh, excessive salivation, trouble speaking. Uh, the best thing you could do is stick your tongue out in the mirror and watch your tongue and raise your tongue and lower your tongue, go left, go right and make sure when, you're, when your mind's telling your tongue to do that, it responds and goes where you, if, if you see it doing something on its own, that is the first start of a neurological manifestation from the bite. Coral snake bite is a slow acting venom. You've got time. If you can get to a hospital in an hour or two, and if you've got anti-venom and you, you were sure you were bitten, you could probably get away with hardly no symptoms at all. The symptoms that you will see if you do not get treatment uh, are pain or no pain, and that's yet to be determined why, swelling or no swelling, uh, but the serious symptoms are of a neurological nature, slurring of speech, ptosis, droopiness of the eyelids, excessive salivation. Uh, if an animal gets bitten by a coral, a dog or a cat, the first thing you will strangely see is the back legs will become weak and they'll start dragging the back legs and then boom, uh, breathing uh, issues and you know, ensue and the diaphragm shuts down. If you can get antivenom as a human within a couple hours, you can avoid that. Now, the exception to the rule is anaphylaxis, allergic reaction. If you're one of the people that might be allergic to coral snake venom, uh, you could die from anaphylaxis. So uh, is it a dangerous venom? It's extremely toxic. It's uh, full of phospholipase A2 components that can cause damage. Uh, there can be kidney damage. There could be a little bit of uh, blood in the urine in some cases, but primarily it is a neurotoxin that attacks the breathing and uh, that's, that's how you can get in a bind and die. The uh, FDA has worked with Pfizer. They have approved a second lot number of coral snake antivenom that was made by Wyeth that expired in 2008. That antivenom lot has been approved to use on any coral snake bites today. Uh, there's a sufficient supply, it's adequate. The hospitals just need to go on FDA.gov and pull down the menu and order the antivenom and it will be sent to them from the, the FDA uh, approved with a letter uh, until the new antivenom is available.